You're listening to the audio-only version of Cocktails with Cav, the popular video cast streamed live only on X. Follow us here on Spotify or on X at Cav Literature. Happy Thursday, everybody. Oh, we're in the throes of Mardi Gras here in New Orleans, and I tell you what, I'm gearing up for the weekend. Hope your week is gone as good as mine. We have just been having some fun uh, with the shows here on Cocktails with Cav, and we've been having some fun out on the streets of New Orleans with Mardi Gras, and that's for sure. But please, look, a little quick housekeeping before we get started with tonight's incredible show with a fellow veteran that I've been so excited to have on the show, and I'm glad he could finally make it. So stick around for that. A little quick housekeeping. If you haven't checked out our merch page, check that out. A lot of great swag, great way to support the show. As always, during the show, our tip function will be up here in the corner. The QR code will take you straight to it. And we'd love your support. That's all it takes is a cheap cup of coffee, and we can keep bringing you all of these great indie authors, entertainers, and artists. And, And I don't know if you've noticed on my X profile, but I finally changed my link on my profile to my link tree. And I tell you what, go check that out. It's it's just I I'm proud of my link tree. I'm telling you, it has the latest cocktails with calves show at the top. Uh, our Spotify audio only broadcasts of our show uh, is next. And then, of course, all the other links to all the great offerings that Cav has to give you including our um, Classics with Cab channel on Rumble, where I have some audiobooks of great, great classic literature that's in the public domain, and I'm rolling that out, so hopefully you can check that out, too. Oh, I tell you what, I, I've been working hard for you guys. I don't know if you know. <laughs> oh, well, enough of all that. Ladies and gentlemen, please follow like us repost the show so more people can get to know all of these great indie authors and entertainers and artists that we're bringing to you and please help me welcome to the stage tonight's special guest the incredible sci-fi author t.o burnett oh t.o my friend i'm so glad you could finally finally join us here on cocktails and cab how you doing my friend I'm good, George, man. Listen, first of all, let me apologize for, um, you know, taking so long to get here. I, I really enjoy talking to you on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it nowadays. That's right. Yeah, uh, you know, you always bring a smile to my face, man. And, um, you know, it's, I, I, you're one of the people I look forward to, to interacting with on a daily basis, man. Oh, I know. And people out in the audience won't know, but... Uh... You know, I'll have to fill them in. You know, T.O. was one of the first real friends I I made on X. And uh, we just uh, cracking each other up with with some good memes and responses and just having a good laugh. And uh, and I actually. For full disclosure, look, T.O. was actually my first invited guest for the show. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it till now, but he probably just wanted to make sure I didn't suck at it before he came on. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, listen, no, listen, I knew uh, the way your account runs on on, on X that you had to be good at it. (laughs) So listen, I was kicking myself because I wanted to be here the first one, but I just had a lot going on. Oh, well, you finally made it, man. And I'm I'm so glad you are because I'm so excited to have you on and talk about your not only your work, uh, but you uh, and let people know about you. So, yeah, please, by all means, let the viewers know a little bit about your background. You, you know, and fo- my fellow veteran, uh, even though we have our little Marine and uh, Army competition going. So, <laughs> but please right. tell us a little about you so the people can get to know you, Tio. That, that's why right. I, I I am a jarhead. So <laughs> let me go ahead. Let me get that out of the way. Um, I'm actually a, um, a Desert Storm vet too, and. Um, and I know a lot of people throw that around a lot of times and, you know, it has the connotation, but I am a actual combat veteran. I'm a, I was a um, machine gunner, ground pounder, and Desert Storm. I turned 21 in the desert over in, um, <laughs> over in Kuwait. And, uh, yeah, we, we got down and dirty over there. Um, um, also, I'm, you know, 
I'm a retired police officer, uh, so you might not have known that about me. Um, um, I, I now train police recruits full time and um, take this off and put a VI hat on me and you'll, you'll see we're out of session right now. We start back up in April. So I'll be um, going at recruits again in April. I'm also a firearms instructor. Um, you know, that's a, you know, side alignment, side picture never changes, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, um, just happened to, I, I'm, I, it's a funny thing, I'm not really a gun guy, but I'm, I happen to be really good at, you know, shooting. I happen to be really good at gun safety. And so I have a lot, a lot of knowledge when it comes to that. And so I like to impart that to people. And so it just, and it, and it pays to be. Uh, writing is, is, is something that I love to do. It's one of the most relaxing things in, in, you know, the world to me. I think you and I are probably around the same age. We come from the same era. If, if you know, you can't be no more than, I, I'm, I can't be more than 10 years older than you. <laughs> but, um, but um, you know, so come to the area where we're heavy on sci-fi and all that stuff. And um, I just have a imagination that surprises me sometimes. And so um, instead of consuming so much science fiction all the time, I just, it just came a point in time where I felt like I needed an outlet to kind of express my, um, not even views on things, but my, my, um, my, my mind and my imagination on things and let people see that and how I view certain things. I oftentimes look at movies and I think, oh, I would have done this to, to, um, in the movie, I would have done this in the Daniel Moore, I would have done this in the climax, I would have done this in the second act and stuff like that. And that kind of comes easy to me. So I think it's a blessing. Well, well, have you been writing and, uh, or, you know, basically, uh, you know, using your imagination in that manner for a long, oh, what, what do we got over there? I forgot to ask you about your cocktail du jour over there. <laughs> this is, this is a little dark. Ah, that, that's fine. I, I, I'm always on my standby uh, whiskey and seven, so we. Uh, there you it's, go. it's my girl army drink. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I won't hold it against you. Yeah, that's right. That's it. But uh, no, uh, yeah, really. Did you have you always done this since you were younger, or did you know you not start this until you got older? Or well, funny thing is, I didn't start writing writing and writing. I didn't start writing fiction until I was forty six. So December 1st of, of 16, and um, which was actually which is actually my um my father's birthday, rest in peace. But um he um so I, I started writing that and, and I wanted to write 10 years earlier when I was 34, 35 years old. But listen, I was probably the last man in America to send an email, right? <laughs> so I had I, I had no idea how word worked, the writing software worked. Um one of my younger co-workers was kind enough to um, sit down and explain to me Google Docs. And um, so I went out and bought the Chromebook that I'm actually um, talking to you through right now. And that night I just started writing. And, you know, the um, the writing journey began in earnest. What, what, what prompted me to get motivated about it was a conversation I had with another co-worker about uh, uh, religion, right? And so ultimately, that led down to a whole different rabbit hole of uh, where mankind came from, are we alone in the universe, you know? And so that sparked an idea in me about, you know, saying that the, the premise of all humans being aliens on this planet, and then from that, Sapien was born. Ah, sapien, was, sapien was born. Right? That's right. Well, yeah. Let's let's talk about this series because it, it really is fascinating. You have uh, three books in the series, uh, in the Sapien series, and and they're just you know they're fascinating reads. But it starts with the the dawn of oblivion. It goes into the days of deception and and ends up with the third book, of course. You know, then there was darkness. But but please tell us a little bit about the series. Uh, you know, this work that got inspired by the, by this idea that got sparked in you. Right, so Sapien is um, about, uh, it's a solar system where, and, and it has nine life-sustaining planets in one solar system. So, you know, so we have to suspend uh, disbelief in 
this true space opera, and it is a space opera. Um, the main character is an individual named Miladi Sodat. He is a um, person who is basically half African and half Scandinavian in a solar system where each planet consists of nothing but one race. So, Alkebulon consists of nothing but black people as we know it. Um, Europa is basically Europeans. Um, uh, Akkadian Arabu is all Arabic people. Then there's, um, there's, there's even a planet called Albin where it consists of nothing but albino people, right? So, and that one obviously is the furthest from the sun. So, one of the, um, there's a, a government entity called the Supreme Council. And one of the, um, there are three different politicians with three different uh, views on how the solar system should be run and how humanity should go forward. They have that much power. One of them, um, Ferris Lamont, believes that um, the solar system should be integrated or that people should be integrated. However, he has he also has the belief that it could never happen in Sapien because everybody is too beholden to their own, too tribal, right? So he sets up an expedition to send uh, pioneers from the Sapien solar system to Earth. And the... Um, they find Earth, and one thing that's going to be consistent, I'll give you guys an Easter egg, one thing that's going to be consistent in all of my, um, in all of my um, stories is they all arrive, they all um, evolve around the arrival of Halley's Comet. So it was that they noticed, they sent out a galaxy expander, they saw Halley's Comet, they saw that it was circling this particular planet that was life-sustaining, and they sent the expedition to that planet. Um, my standalone that I recently wrote, circa 1740, was um, uh, it was Haley's comet that put out the cosmic effects that allow my characters in that story to time travel. And so they were um, the, the perihelion of the comet, when that was at its highest, that allowed them to um, the cosmic effects had you know, were right at the so at the right time in the right place they were able to go and time travel to a destination of their choosing. But well, I tell you, that's, uh, yeah, the, the book Circa 1740s, you know, really fascinating to me. Like all great science fiction, obviously it's a, it, it tries to speak to issues and, you know, in a futuristic manner. And, and yeah, Circa 1741, the premise is, you know, the national sports hero gets yeah. zapped back into slavery and it's yeah. it's you know, fascinating premise. Uh, what sparked that that book for you, your latest? So Circa 1740 was sparked by um, some some self-reflection and house cleaning with, um, with, with, within my own race. Um, given the backdrop of slavery, one would think going into that book that it's gonna be a book that's gonna say, you know, the whitey is bad, right? But what Circa 1740 is, is very critical of problematic black men, right? So it takes a microscope and look and looks at people, uh, uh, a race of people or a demographic of people who a lot of people view as a monolith, but it thin slices us in a way that's gonna be um, very recognizable to a lot of black people who read this already, but, but may not um, be readily be recognizable to people who are on the outside looking in. So it takes that and, and, I, and I deal with those individuals, those good and bad, you know, those. Um, so I take certain character um, individuals, certain personality traits that are good, some are bad, and I make them caricatures in the story so that they are um, amplified to their best or their worst so that they're readily identifiable. And, um, that's what it's about. Um, the Quandre Tyson in that story is an individual. On the, on the surface, he is not a bad guy. He is not a bad guy. He is, um, he is indifferent. And so, uh, a co-worker of his, Malik Godson, um, you know, points out some, you know, some problems in his personality that he thinks that he should, you know, 
look at and and basically tells him that he owes his community more than he's given his community you know and only and DeQuandre Tyson is a type of individual that had he been told and he's, he's a very intelligent person and had he been told and explained something he would have understood it but it wouldn't have resonated it took him going and living 70 years in Jamestown, Virginia from 1740 for it to sink in and that it it's an amazing story to you. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I said uh, a little bit earlier, yeah, all great science fiction ha- addresses issues, you know, the humanity of of everyone. I think it, a lot of times today you just there's there's no discussion, you know, versus <laughs> what's going on in the world. And if people would just talk more or, or you know. Yeah, I tell you what, people people tap dance and tiptoe around a lot of things that that should be openly discussed. Um, you know, um, some of my best friends, people I love, are on the opposite sides of the of the um, fence for me politically, and um, you know, but that's that's not a hindrance. You know, you have to you have to you know one thing about the um, the military, you know. The beautiful thing about that is it takes people who never would have spoken to one another otherwise and puts them together in some tight situations and you become fast friends, man. Yeah, oh, that's it. And, and, yeah. and it lasts forever, ironically it lasts, enough. <laughs> it, it, it lasts forever. Those guys are my brothers, man. Yeah. Those, those guys are my brothers. And, um, you know, that, you know, one of my buddies, man, um, I went down to Alabama um, a few years back and he found out that I stayed in the hotel, and he's he's a, he's a white guy, and we're like opposite sides of the spectrum politically or whatever. But he um he found out that I stayed in the hotel that was near there, and he cussed me out, like, <laughs> cussed me out. He said, "Don't you ever bring your butt down here, you know, and, and, and not sleep and, and not spend the night at my house again." And so every time I go down, his kids call me Uncle 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 Brunette, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, no. it's, it's, it's great. yeah. And, and it really is, and I, and I think that's. Uh, do do you find that a lot in your social media? Because I know, uh, I mean, you and I, like I said earlier, we we've cut up some and it just had some fun times. And uh, but a lot of the times, it it's. Do you find thought bubbles going on and and that kind of just that isolation that without taking in different perspectives and discussions it, it it's fascinating to me that that's occurred so rapidly yeah you know and it's um you know in social media man you know it's it's tricky because you have to walk that line you know you you speak your mind and be 100 percent honest for 10 seconds in your viral right and, yeah. then, <laughs> and, then, and then the whole world's against you right you know so it's um one of those things we have to you have to really uh, focus on playing well with others. Um, the beautiful thing about Twitter is that it allows you to um, um, extract um, certain personality traits from other people, and, and you find commonality, find common ground, and you bond there. You meet them there, and you work outward, outward from there, right? You know, you and I, uh, I think we have a lot in common. We have a very similar sense of humor, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually very similar backgrounds as well you know as I spent yeah I'm retiring from law enforcement myself <laughs> yeah, awesome. Like, awesome awesome see what I'm saying that's it. And, and there and there's and that's there it is that's that's the connection and so you know and we and you and I know listen that we can we can go down a whole rabbit hole with that too you know as yeah, far as yeah. you know per- perception and all that stuff you know and we know there's a lot of good people doing the good work out there every day and you know my my whole career my whole thing was to stay out of the news right yeah right <laughs> and it's nowadays is a different world that's that's for sure it's uh you know it's, it's, it's a different world so that's what a lot of times i you know when i um, we have in-service training and i um speak to the officers about you know avoiding landmines you know going out there and you know treating every person as if it's your hard of hearing grandmother that you're that you're speaking to, 
you have to take that type of care with individuals, right? And, um, you know, in, in that situation, if, if somebody still chooses to, you know, you know, uh, be skeptical or, or about your behavior, your character, then so be it. You can't please everybody. Yeah. yeah. And and that's interesting that you, you do a lot of, of training and, uh, you know, like I said, I, I love these discussions we have on this show because you never know where it goes. But uh, but yeah, that that's a s- interesting question for me to ask you is, is, you know, as somebody who does training, because it's something I thought a lot about the last few years. Do you find the younger generation coming into the profession or as um, ah, what's the what's the term? Do you find as many young young people willing to come into the profession now? You know, the the, the weird thing about that is, I would I would have thought that it would have slowed down, right? And and we're getting we're getting figures that that say it's slowing down, but our academy, we 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 our, our next class is already filling up. Our last class was full. Um. Our last few classes have been, you know, have, the numbers have actually picked up. Um, I think, there you go. Get it. <laughs> we'll have to cut that one and start over on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot yeah. to turn my phone off to you. <laughs> yeah, I had to, trust me, I had to mute mine a second ago. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so um, I find that the classes, to answer your question, I find that the classes are picking up the, um, we're finding that there are a lot of people who are more gung ho about police work, and they're eager to go and they're, they're eager to come in and change the perception of th- that we've. Uh, I guess I have to, for lack of a better way of saying it, earned of the, of, of the reputation that we've earned. You know, they're trying to you know switch that up, and it's we're putting them out there with a the kind of gentler mindset as far as the um, public go, perception-wise. Now, and I say perception-wise because of this, because I, also, I still teach, you know, protect your personal space. I still teach um, responses, proper responses to over stimuli, to over threats and things of that nature. And we still teach them to, um, the bottom line is, no matter what, you go home every day. Yeah, sure. And, yeah. and uh, but that's, that's great to hear though. Uh, that's a fascinating new point that you made that the, the upcoming generation is is kind of anxious to change that stigma that's become attached to the profession in a lot of ways so that's 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 kind of heartening you know so yeah, yeah. i mean and listen you know you know how it goes listen I, I i i'm sure you've lost count of the the um the tires you've changed for citizens throughout your career right yeah, and, sure, and, and just all, all the all the cats and trees, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's all of the, all of the above, right? And, that doesn't uh, go viral on TikTok, though, man. And, and, it, like, it, it, <laughs> and it won't, you know, because all that can be undone by somebody who has a questionable shooting. Yeah, sure, you sure. Know? And so, you know, we, you know, a big part of it too is um, we have to be quicker, I think, to hold one another accountable. You know, we have to be quicker to um, say, yeah, you're right, when clearly there is a problem with something that we did and not yeah. be defensive because they they think this imaginary thin blue line is something that is impenetrable and that we all hide behind. We don't. Um, it's, you know, we, we understand due process, but sometimes um, we have to um, let empathy take over where logic is um, holding the space. Yeah, and and that's true, and uh, and again, I think it all uh, just comes back to discussion and uh, openness and conversation, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, it's, Absolutely. It's worth it's worth a toast, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right, toast. Thank you. Oh man, Tio, I tell you what, though, this this is this is just, even though we took a little twist and turns into, into some of our other professions, and uh, but you know, I I'm sure all of that. Uh, whether it's the military or, or you know, law enforcement experience or whatever, and it, it, I'm sure it all bleeds into your writing, you know, and and it, it comes does. into comes into your thought process going into it, you know. How, how do you write? 
when you, when you're writing your your sci-fi because that's a, it's a fascinating genre to me always you know and it like you said we grew up with some of the the greats in sci-fi that we're heck we're on the we're on the Jetsons phone now right that's right that's right, that's right. <laughs> and that's right. uh but yeah what's your what was your process just uh coming up with that futuristic mindset and coming bringing it back full circle to humanity you know the um the, so the thing is uh my mindset is this to wrap universal truths in a bunch of bells and whistles right right so at the heart of it a christmas tree is a tree right you could put a whole bunch of ornaments on there and make it look this and a whole bunch of subterfuge and make it feel special for that special day but when it's all stripped down it's a tree so um in my science fiction i take that same approach you know there um i can have special weapons uh twice emitters um epics and you know um oxygen elimination and ammunition and stuff like that but at the bottom at the at the core of everything is um human conflict and universal human conflict and the resolution in my point of view of how to resolve those those conflicts and what my solutions are to certain things and you know I'm big on I'm big on verisimilitude and plausibility right so there has to be some truthfulness in the essence of the story and it has to be plausible within the world I've created right so I can't have somebody you know have human abilities in act 1 and then all of a sudden it turn into Hulk the incredible Hulk in act 3 when it's convenient for the plot right right so right. so I have to make sure that I'm consistent with all of that so in that that's why I love writing first books of of, of series right because you can pretty much lay it out in everything you can establish everything and if you want to have people be able to read each other's minds you will have you can have somebody teleport you can have somebody with telekinesis telekinetic abilities all that stuff you can do that you have to stick to it and you have to have put put limitations on what they can move and all that other stuff but you can do that you can't have somebody normal in book 1 and then you know be telekinetic in book 3 yeah you know? well I, and i tell you that's a fascinating way you put it i've never heard it put quite that way before and it's a good way to put it you're right at the you know that that christmas tree analogy at the end of at the end of the day it's universal human conflict and and dress it up and It, 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 that's a great great technique I like it I'm gonna steal yeah. it no. oh, well, yeah. <laughs> like hey, I do hey. all your memes <laughs> <laughs> listen listen I steal them so you might as well steal them too so. <laughs> <laughs> that's it oh man well T.O. look I, I am so glad you were finally able to come on uh, and like I said I'm, I'm glad I got through some of the kinks and the early things and, and got you on here uh, finally and and had a great show talking about your work again ladies and gentlemen like you've heard us talk about look Tio is a great person great member of the writing community and a great member of the X community interacting and talking and uh and and exchanging ideas and and exchanging laughs so yeah, <laughs> and it's all, uh, all the time so all please time. go give Tio a follow uh his screen his screen name on X at author Tio Burnett is right there on the uh, screen under his video shot for you and yes. as well please uh all show long we've had it uh, above us Tio I don't know if you could see it during the show but uh above us this banner is uh QR code take you straight to TO's website uh which we've been kind of getting a glimpse at his sapien.world uh and slash shop that QR code will take you straight to and and you can get a hold of all of his great works in the sapien series uh heck yeah I'm looking now you even have posters and Yeah. some great hoodies and t-shirts. I got to give me some that's, hoodies on my. That's merch. right. Man. That's <laughs> the, the I got I got to give me some of those too. But uh yeah. and it's and of course your latest too, man. Oh, that's it. I'm telling you. And yeah. your latest your latest work uh are, are you what are you doing now? Are you you having any events coming up or that you want to plug or uh for Circus 1740? Uh um no um nothing I'm, I'm right now I'm busy winding down I'm 80,000 words into my latest work in progress which is um the Mesolord's armor yeah and so 
that is going to be an amazing book. Uh, if you if you are into um, space opera, Star Wars, and um, you know, and this this book is like the three hundred meets Grandmaster in a Flash in the Furious Five in space. If you, if you, if you can we wrap your scoop. mind around it. We got a scoop on cocktails with Cav, but the new right. book. <laughs> that's right. Right. So the Mesolord's armor. Uh, that should that should be out um, by June at, at the latest. Um, oh man, To. Well, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to that. And please, by all means, come back on uh, when you launch your new book. I'd love to talk about it and, and listen. You I know, see if we can steal some info. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Listen, I would love to. I would love to be back, man. This has been great. You know, you. Um, Listen, uh, well, you know, once again, you're one of my favorite guys. I, I always look forward to uh, interacting with you on, on on Twitter. You always come with positivity, man, and I appreciate that so much. Because, oh, man. Yeah, listen, you know, th- there's there's line lines all through that app, right? You always, you know, anybody can just, you got people that come on here looking to be offended. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> right. So, so I, you know, I appreciate the fact that I can be free with you and, you know, and, and, and we can sit back and, and have fun. And it's all good. So I appreciate oh, that. Oh, T.O., man, look, the pleasure's all mine, bud. I, I tell you what, they have a great time. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, incredible sci-fi author T.O. Barnett. Burnett, go follow him on X. Uh, and please, please go visit his website that's been up top on a QR code and check out some of his merch and, and his series of books in, in the Sapien series as well as his latest circa 1740 yeah T.L. my friend I'll see you around and, and I'll look for your memes to, to hassle you with in the comments over buddy <laughs> listen I'm gonna keep pumping them up and listen I'm gonna tell you right now the secret to this is this I believe in in, in, in having non-stop shenanigans and not and not bombing people with my content so what happens is people see that they laugh they laugh they laugh and say let me check this guy's page and right there my pen tweet <laughs> That's that's where my books are. So that's that's how I get them. <laughs> it works. It works. That's it. <laughs> well, T.O., man, look, you have a great rest of the evening. And again, promise you'll come back when the, when your latest work uh, comes out, yes. hopefully around summertime, you said. Hey, promise me you'll have me. It's been you, a blast. You, you know it, my friend. I'll be there. <laughs> my man. My Cheers. Man. Cheers. Appreciate you. All right, T.O. T.O.